How you doing, Sean O'Brien with Two of You Guys in Gear, and um, today we're going to do a video on our bayonet collection. Yeah, so uh, both of us have uh, some pretty cool bayonets, and I think yep. uh, part of being a, a gun collector, shooter, or whatever, especially if you have mill serp guns, right. is buying the bayonets to go with them. Um, and, and, and actually, I think that's kind of, it's one of those things that you kind of need to finish off the rifle. So right. never use it, but it's kind of just got to have Get, it. You're getting all the accessories, and that's one of the major <laughs> exactly. accessories. Um, exactly. So, and, and bayonets can be expensive, so it's which is crazy. Yeah, there's a lot of times where the bayonets more than the rifle were on <laughs> some of them out there just through the roof that's it, it, it's crazy and, and you look at some of these bayonets and uh you know you would look at it and it's something you might pass up at a flea market or right. a pawn shop and, and the perfect example is this uh m17 austro-hungarian trench knife and uh this is actually from world war one and you look right. at this and it looks like you know it's an old beat up crappy knife right. but you know five six years ago i researched it and it was 150 dollars yeah. So, and this was actually uh, a hand-me-down, like uh, most of my bayonets are, from my uh, great-grandfather and my grandfather from World War One and World War Two. So, and uh, yeah, this is my great-grandfather, too. He's in the Navy, and he came back with this. Nice. So, it's pretty cool. Pretty yeah, cool. that's real cool. So, um, but yeah, I know on the on the other hand, you have a lot of uh, pretty awesome bayonets, too. So, what's one of them that you it, have? It, most of the ones I've acquired um, what have been... Uh, flea markets, mm -hmm. military shows. Uh, I haven't bought any gun shows because right. they try to jack the price up on everything. Um, and, you know, some of them I got with deals buying a, a, um, rifles. Um, like this one I picked up at a, at a military show, and, and I couldn't figure out what it was. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew it was a um, bayonet for M16, but I've never seen the, the you know, the way it's made. Right. And it's got a crown on it. And I took a chance. Uh, I even texted Brian while I was at the show and said, you know, you know what the hell this is? And no idea. So I took a chance and bought it. And the guy, I don't know, it was like 25 bucks. Yeah. So what the hell? Then I get home and come to find out it's a Danish um, contract That's bayonet. Cool. All right. Which was cool. I guess we gave permission to, um, to you know, manufacture uh, bayonets. Which is pretty cool, I thought. Yeah, that is cool. And that's one of those things where, you know, it's a rainy day thing. You go research it online and try right. to find it. Yeah. So, um, now one of my favorite bayonets, uh, <laughs> and this is, you know, like I said, these are my uh, grandfather's, great grandfather's. This is the uh, French model 1874 Grasse. And I remember specifically as a kid growing up, my older brother chasing me around with this thing. But we survived, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, kids yeah. of the 80s, we survived. And uh, yeah, you do it now, you're, you're a <laughs> bad parent, right? <laughs> so um yeah this is a really cool bayonet so this is uh this is the last of the french uh sword type bayonet and it was actually made for the uh the grass rifle which is an old french rifle now the cool thing about this is it has on the back of the uh the blade it actually has some french writing i don't read or write french uh but apparently that is the uh the factory it was made in and the uh the date that it was made and this one was 1878 that's cool. So definitely cool. And it's real cool. And uh, five, six years ago when I researched these, this one was about 150 bucks. So guessing maybe it's more now. I don't know. I would imagine. But yeah. it's still, it's, you know, even, even if it wasn't. It's right. A cool factor. Yeah. And this also has a uh, the scabbard on it and the bayonet. Both have serial numbers. Uh, they don't match, unfortunately, but that's okay. So uh, one of the things I would like to do is get, actually get a French Gross rifle yeah. just to go with it. So right. probably never shoot it, but it's one of those things. Got the bayonet. Got to get the yeah, rifle. Might as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, another one. This is, you know, another one that's got a story behind it. This is an Air Saka bayonet. Mm -hmm. uh, Nagoya. I think that's what factory. It, how you pronounce it? Um, it's in really nice shape. Uh, the guy I gave it. To, I was buying a. I don't. I didn't have a lash ditch rifle. Right. Yep. So I was. I was buying it from him, and he said, "Hey, do you want this?" And I thought he was trying to sell it. He right. goes, "No, you can have it. It's. It's no good now." And the part that goes over the barrel was bent. <laughs> and and I'm thinking to myself, "Well, well I can fix that." And um, and I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. And I brought it home and, and got the circle straightened out. Yeah. And um, yeah, she's good to go. That is a cool uh, bayonet. It still has the, uh, you know, the grease in it. Yep. That's amazing. And um, I, I guess to that point, I also have an Arasaka bayonet. Yeah. <clears throat> Mine's a little bit different. Mine was made by, uh, I've got it written down here, Toyota Automatic Loom Works. Uh, so, and, and again, this one's in excellent condition. Uh, when I got this from my grandfather, it sat in his basement for years, and uh, it was still coated in grease. And, and you can see it's in excellent shape. 
uh, went online, figured out what these stamps mean in it, and that's how I figured out it was the Toyota Automatic right. Loom Works. And uh, but yeah, this one also it was a World War II bring back uh, from my grandfather, and he was in the Navy. So um, there's a story behind that, how he got it. So which I won't go into right now, but he uh, yeah he brought this back. So nice. it's definitely cool, definitely a cool uh, piece of history. So family history too. Yeah, they're they're real close um, in the, in the way they look. Yeah, um, the handle wise. Um, the blade wise, they're just, you can tell that one was made in a different factory than the other. Right. But, uh, and I'll tell you, out of all the bayonets on here, I think the Japanese bayonets are probably, they feel like the best made bayonets here. So right. at, at least the, the metal on them and the, the way they're actually, they hold in their hand, I, I think they're probably one of the better ones. So um, what's next on yours? Um, this, I got this, uh, I picked this Vietnam air sh uh, shovel up. Mm-hmm. And for the longest time, I finally uh, found a, the pouch for it. And for a couple of years, I couldn't figure out what this this holder was or what went in it. And then happened to see a picture online finally. Yeah. And said, "Oh, that what's, <laughs> that's what goes in it." So um, I put I put the bayonet in it, and uh, fits like a glove. Yeah, and uh, that thought that was pretty cool. It's something I just have hanging on the wall. Yeah, and that's that's what I like about it. It's like the perfect like man cave thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think you'll ever use it, but nah. it's just cool to have. So, no, that's the zombies come. That's right. That's true. That's <laughs> <laughs> so. And I guess to that point, I have a uh, M1 Grand bayonet. This one was for my grandfather who was in the army, and uh, it's again in excellent condition. And uh, this one has the uh, the AFH and then the uh, the US flaming bomb on it. And nice. uh, AFH stands for American Fork and Hell. I guess it's the uh, the company that produced it for right. the US. And uh, yeah, it's in excellent shape. So, um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. So um, that's on my to get list. I yes, still haven't. Still haven't got one yet. Yeah, it's definitely neat. And this, again, just like the Japanese bayonets, these things are very well made too. And I mean, just so heavy right. for that small package, you know? Yeah. So I like this bayonet a lot. And again, I don't know exactly what a grand bayonet's going me, for right now. Me either. And the problem is every time I go looking at them, you see some that are, you know, $50, $60, $70. Right. And then the one next to it is $200. Right. And, and the they difference? look identical. Yeah. And I don't know. And I think that's the thing with having to do the research on them. Right. You know, you got to know what you're looking at. So. So I, and like I tell the guy there, I just, I just want to ban it. <laughs> oh, the right, right, right. right. But, um, of course we have your you know typical AK bayonet. Um, there's a million different uh, oh, yeah. versions of that. Um, I have probably eight different models. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Uh, and then I have a VZ58 bayonet. Um, these have gotten pretty popular, and now they're even. I've even seen them. I guess somebody's brought them over uh, new old stock. They're okay. Like brand new sheaves. Um, brand new bayonets. Awesome. So. Okay, so the last two that I have, these are actually uh, model 1895 Austro-Hungarian bayonets. So I've got two of them here, uh, slightly different. This one has the uh, the bent uh, quillen, I think is how you pronounce mm -hmm. it, I'm not sure. And that was more of an officer's or NCO's uh, bayonet. And uh, these are a little bit different in the fact that the uh, the actual, uh, the sharp point or of the blade, I guess, is actually facing up as opposed to uh, being on the bottom of the bayonet. So, and again, you know, about 150 bucks. This <coughs> is another prime example where the rifle's $100 right. and exactly. the bayonet's a couple hundred. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, if you were to buy the bayonet and the scabbard, you know, it's 150 bucks. Right. And then if you get the leather frog for it, which holds right. it on your belt, that's another 100 bucks. So you're 250 bucks into a bayonet or in, for an $80 rifle. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's nuts. <laughs> so, but yeah, but you know, it's one of those things, you know, I was fortunate enough to get these from family, but it, it's one of those things where if I had the rifle and I wanted one, I'd probably go out and buy right. one just to complete it. So, right. and that's like the ammo for the, the stock. Oh my gosh. I mean, it, the original. A, yeah, it's a buck around. Yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous. Yep. Yeah, for the Nazi stamp yep. ammo. Yep, absolutely. Yep. So, what else do you have? Um, I have the uh, the Yug Yugoslavian, uh, was it M48? Mm -hmm. I think Mauser that's right. bayonet. Uh, this one came with the rifle when I bought it. Um, it this is well made too. It's Well, all your Mauser bayonets pretty much are made right. really nice. Right. But, uh, yeah, this is this one's a real nice one, um, and then we have the Argentina. Yes. Um, I picked this up. A guy had a crate of old ammo and a bunch of junk in it, and when I bought some rifles from him, and he asked me if I wanted the crate, 
And I got this one and another one. The other one, I'm not sure what it is. It's just so rusted. Yeah, it's right. I just held on to it. So. Yep. Now, out of all these, the one that I would hate to get stabbed with the most, as bad as that is, I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to get stabbed with anything. Right, right. But it's the old Enfield yeah. bayonet, man. It's basically like a, a pointy, uh, pointy piece of metal. Yeah, so, with a pry bar. <laughs> right, right. I mean, it's literally like a piece of rebar. Yeah. So, but yeah, that thing's that's nasty, and it says on here it's for the uh, number four, I guess. Yes. Mark four. Mark and two. There's, okay. You know, a bazillion different ones of right. those too. Yep. But so, uh, what do these cost? They got to be cheap. That one was like eight bucks, okay. and then the scarab was, I don't know, a couple dollars. Okay, it wasn't much. Right. Um, you know, a lot of these, I really don't. I'm not a big collector, mm -hmm. but if I can find them for under seventy five bucks, yeah, give or not? take, I, I'll, I'll buy it. Yep. Um, I haven't paid that for any of my bayonets. The, I think the most expensive I one I bought was fifty bucks. Okay. So right. Either I'm trading or exactly you know that's the way to go. Or finding them. Account you know, and cleaning them up, but, uh, yeah, I just, I'm not that, I'm not going to go spend a couple hundred dollars on a Bennett. Right. When I can buy a case of ammo for that. <laughs> <laughs> Cheap <bastard>. So, <laughs> so where's that book that you had? Oh, where's that? yeah, this is a good book. Um, there's tons of books. There's tons of websites you can oh, go yeah. to, to research, uh, your bayonets. Um, this is, I, I bought this off Amazon. Um, it's, I think it's a great book. There's tons of info out there. There's a lot of good books out there. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's a fun little thing to do on the side. And it is. If you, uh, you know, you collect firearms. Yep. Yep. Just kind of goes hand in hand with it, really. Right. So, uh, but yeah, so it was, uh, it's cool showing you guys all these, you know, get some of this history out here. Uh, hopefully it'll help you guys maybe identify something that you have that you can't figure out what it is, too. I don't know. So, um, yeah, bayonets are a whole other world. <laughs> they are. <laughs> they are. Especially, like you said, the fighting knives. Right. That's a whole other yeah. collecting by itself. And, and that was actually, this was out of all of the ones I researched online, this was actually the hardest one to research. So it took several hours online to figure out what it was. So just going by the appearance of it and the few stamps that were all on right. it. So, but yeah, it was definitely, definitely difficult. So. All right. But anyhow, so, um, but yeah, we're now on Instagram, so you can check us out there. Yep. And of course, you can check us out at 2aguysandgear.com as well, too. So I hope you guys liked the video, found it informative. Uh, but yeah, so check yeah, us out. These are our bayonets, and as we get more, um, later on down the line, we'll, uh, we'll do another video. Yep. All right. See you.